Good evening, gentlemen. Welcome back to the old computer shack. Yesterday, or was it the day before? Some the last video. In the last video, we um, we discussed uh, the type of circuit we were going to have to build to convert uh, TTL CGA video signals into analog RGB signals, uh, with the eventual intention of. Uh, upscaling that to VGA for display on a standard VGA monitor. And in that video I made some errors and I was not uh, as informed as I should be about how uh, RGB monitor termina internal termination works. So I have been educated on this subject now and I'm going to redo that video Hopefully this will be correct now and delete the old video because I don't want some poor soul stumbling along through the YouTubes and coming upon my garbage and being led astray by my stupidity. So uh, I'd like to especially thank you folks down there in the comments who uh, pointed out the errors of my ways. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. So, um, parts have started to arrive for this big fat KVM project, or at least a couple of them have. I've, I've gotten the uh, Macintosh DB15 VGA converter for the, uh, for the Mac 2CI, uh, but the uh, high density DB15 connectors that we need to actually implement this circuit aren't supposed to be here until Friday. So, I'm just going to redo the figuring and schematic drawing that we did last time except without errors this time and uh, then we'll do something more interesting next time. Um, but I have gotten some other parts um, for other machines as well. So here's a tube full of PALS programmable array logics that was sent to me by a lovely fellow in Charleston, almost a neighbor. And uh, these PALs go in, where did I put it, this lovely board. Do you know what this is? Ah, 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 this is a uh, Motorola 68K CPU board for a TRS-80 Model 16. Now, this is the Model 2 bus down here. Uh, the Model 16 is just a Model 2 with some extra cards in it that allow it to also have a 68K processor. Um, and uh, it can run Xenix uh, 1.2, I think, which is an ancient, well, all versions of Xenix are ancient, I suppose, but 1.2 is especially ancient. Um, later on in the, I think with the Tandy 16B and the Tandy 6000, it could run Xenix 3, which was a much more capable operating system, but these old school dog ear CPU cards um, don't support a certain uh, burst mode that is required for running uh, Xenix 3.2 without patches or Xenix 3.3 at all. But if we install these PALs and do a small amount of uh, reworking on this board we can make it run Xenix 3 so the eventual goal with the Model 2 is to get it running Xenix um, and that'll be awesome but so that's a long ways away though but we have some parts to start on that uh, squirreled away ahead of time I'm also going to have to build a RAM card for it uh, the, C the 68K card uses a separate RAM from the Z80. They both operate in tandem. The, the 68K does nothing uh, except run Xenix. It doesn't do any I.O. or anything. That's still handled by the Z80. Uh, it takes over as an I.O. processor. It's really a rather, rather interesting way to do things. And then I'll also have to have, have a hard drive controller for this thing because I believe that's also required to run Xenix. And that'll be the hardest part. So anyway, let me put this away um, and uh, then we'll go back to our cat scratching here. Yes. Alright folks, here we go again. So, uh, the idea here is to convert from CGA and perhaps eventually also MDA and EGA uh, to a an analog RGB signal that we can put through the uh, GBS8200 scan doubler 
an output to a VGA monitor. Um, this resamples, this will resample a, uh, a lower frequency um, video signal, RGB, analog RGB video signal, and output a higher frequency analog RGB signal. Uh, we have to do that because most VGA monitors won't sync to anything lower than 31.5 kilohertz, and CGA operates at 15 kilohertz. So we have to double that scan rate with this board after converting it to analog RGB in order to display it on a VGA monitor. We're not going to worry about this right now, though. All we're going to worry about right now is converting the digital CGA signal into an analog RGB signal. So, uh, CGA um, is a digital uh, video format. Video format, video standard, perhaps that's a better word. So, um, all, of, all of the signals on the CGA connector are either uh, 0 or 5 volts, on or off. There is no... Um, analog voltage range between that 0 and 5 volts. And the signals that we have on the CGA connector are red, green, blue, intensity. These are our video signals. And also a horizontal sync signal and a vertical sync signal. Now these four bits of a of, of video signal here will give us a total of 16 colors. Now um, the CGA cards can typically only display like four colors at a time I think um, but like the uh, the the Tandy 1000s um, have a little bit better video hardware in them and they can actually display all 16 of these colors on the screen at the same time so um, all of these signals are digital signals um, that are either zero volts aka low or five volts aka high there is no analog waveform generated by these things. It's just square waves. On the other end of the spectrum we have the analog RGB signal, the VGA connector. Um, it consists of an analog uh, red signal, an analog green signal, an analog blue signal, and still digital, still TTL, horizontal and vertical sync signals. However, um, this, uh, this converter here that we're going to be using to upscale uh, this uh, 15 kilohertz video signal um, to 31.5 kilohertz to display on a VGA monitor. Uh, at frequencies lower than 31.5 kilohertz, it only accepts a composite sync signal. It doesn't accept separate horizontal and vertical sync signals, so we're also going to have to figure out how to combine uh, these separate horizontal and vertical sync signals into one C-sync signal. Alright, so... How are we going to do that? Well, if we look at uh, these, now this isn't true of the synchronization signal, but if we look at these uh, analog um, RGB inputs on the uh, device like your VGA monitor or that scan converter that we were just looking at, um, the voltage ranges on each of these RGB lines are between zero and 0 0.7 volts for all of these lines. All right. Now, inside of the monitor or the uh, video conversion device, each of these lines is internally terminated by a 75 ohm resistor. That means that all of these lines, this is the, this is the inside of the monitor right here. All right. Each of these lines inside of the monitor has a 75 ohm resistor on it that is tied to ground. Oh, 75, not 73. All right. 75 ohms. 75 ohms. All right. So, um, these uh, outputs on these uh, digital RGB signals, when they're low, they're going to be zero volts, which is compatible with this side, with the low side of our uh, analog output here that we're going to be working with. But when these go high, they're 5 volts. So the idea here is that we need to somehow convert these um, 5 volt signals down into 7 tenths of a volt. And the way that we do that is we, uh, we, uh, we want to construct a voltage divider. Let me uh, switch papers here and I'll try to show you what I mean. So um, imagine we have a circuit uh, with an input voltage right it goes through a resistor and uh, leads to an output voltage all right 
and then we'll, we'll call this resistor R1 and we'll also add another resistor right here that gets tied to ground and we'll call that R2. Alright, so um, imagine that this is the digital side of our, uh, our CGA connector, one of the digital uh, outputs on it, red, green, or blue, and this is the um, analog input to a monitor. Okay, now this um, this R2 right here is going to be that 75 ohm termination resistor that's inside of the monitor. Alright, so what we have here though is a, a classic voltage divider circuit. So uh, depending on the value of these two resistors, we put an input voltage in uh, on this side. Of our, uh, of our circuit and we get some lower output voltage on this side. The trick is figuring out um, what values of, res of resistor we need to use uh, to do that. So, um, <clears throat> uh, the way we can do this is recall uh, Ohm's law V equals voltage equals amperage times resistance and we can rearrange this. I'm going to do it correctly this time <laughs> instead of screwing up like a dummy. We can rearrange this as amperage is equal to voltage over resistance. All right. Now, if we uh, measure the voltage, the Vn voltage right here, from this point down to this point, all right, V is going to be Vn, that's going to be our voltage level, and the resistance is going to be R1 plus R2. Recall that when we wire resistors in series, their uh, total resistance is additive. It's going to be R1 plus R2. Now, we'll come over here to this other side, this side that's inside the monitor, and we're going to, we're, this time we're going we're gonna to be measuring voltage between VL and ground here. So, uh, the voltage here, we're going to use the same equation here that we rearranged. It's going to be I is equal to V out over just R2. Right? So now that we have two equations, both of which are equal to I, we can set these two equations equal to each other. So Vn over R1 plus R2, we can set equal to V out over R2. All right? And we can rearrange this equation. We can solve for the output voltage, all right? And what we come up with is the output voltage is equal to the input voltage times the value of R2 over R1 plus R2. And since we have um, our 75 ohm resistor inside of the monitor doing this termination thing on the, uh, on the digital or on the analog RGB input, uh, we know that R2 is always going to be 75 ohms when we're trying to figure out um, the values for this equation here. So that's always going to be 75 ohms. Our input, our output voltage from our um, CGA card, or uh, whatever CGA device we're using, is always going to be 5 volts, all right, and we want this output voltage over here to equal 7 tenths of a volt so that we get maximum in intensity on this uh, analog RGB signal inside of the monitor here, right? So that gives us all of the values that we need uh, to solve um, for R1, right? So we go ahead and plug all of these in. Uh, we can get the output voltage is going to be 7 tenths of a volt. Right? I'm going to go ahead and divide our Vn out on this side over 5 volts is going to be equal to R2, which is 75 ohms, over R1 plus 75 ohms. And from there, we can, of course, solve for R1. Um, I'll do that by magic here, because I'm sure, especially if you watched the last video, that you don't want to watch this bullshit all over again. Alright, so uh, due to the magic of video editing, you didn't have to suffer through all that bullshit. What we get is 460 ohms for R1. Alright, so... Where did my original circuit go? So we can build us a circuit that takes one of these digital... RGB outputs, sends it through a 460 ohm resistor, well, well that'll probably actually have to be 470 ohms because that's the closest value I'm going to find. In fact I may end up using a variable resistor right, right here, so 
so we can kind of tweak the brightness a little bit. Anyhow, um, and then that will just go straight into the monitor. This is the monitor right here, and inside of that monitor is a 75 ohm termina termination resistor. And that gives us our voltage divider, except this is inside the monitor, and that's going to be our analog red signal. And note that um, we, can, we, can measure, we can measure the voltage right here um, on the outside of the monitor. Um, while the circuit's plugged in, this resistor has to be in circuit for this voltage right here to, to look right. We can't just measure it on an unplugged connector, right? Um, and adjust that on an oscilloscope um, or something to get our proper uh, 7 tenths of a volt. We'll have to use an oscilloscope because it's a waveform. Um, it's not going to work right on a multimeter, right? So anyway, yeah. So uh, that'll give us, um, we, can, we, can, we can replicate this on all of our digital CGA signals here, that's going to be 470 on all of those, right? And that'll give us eight colors. Uh, we've got three bits, red, green, and blue here, um, outputting eight colors within the uh, RGB uh, voltage, voltage, uh, voltage range to our um, analog RGB device. But we've forgotten about the intensity bit here. Um, the function of the intensity bit uh, on the CGA uh, on the CGA connector is that when when this intensity bit is low, when it's zero volts, um, these uh, the video is dimmer, and when it is high, five volts, the video is at full strength. So what we have to do is somehow um, attach this intensity signal uh, to the circuit in such a way that it reduces this this analog uh, voltage here um, down to let's let's say three and a half or point. 0.35 volts. Um, I think it actually needs to be a little bit higher than that most of the time. There are a couple of exceptions, but we'll um, we'll talk about those at the end. So, um, how are we going to do that? Well, um, we'll take our intensity bit here, all right, and we'll run it out this way, and we'll start with our red signal, and we're going to tie into our red signal right here, right, and we're going to come down. We're going to add a resistor right here. And then we're going to come all the way down here, right? And we're going to put a diode right here, pointing in this direction. That ties to that intensity line right there. And we're going to call this, um, we'll call this R, R th well, we'll get to that in a second. We're going to do that for each of these uh, digital, digital RGB lines. We'll put a resistor on each of those. That goes through a diode and ties to that intensity line. There's a little tiny little diode right here. A little tiny little resistor. Because I didn't leave myself enough room. So what's going to happen here is um, when the uh, let's, when the uh, when the intensity signal uh, is high, when it's 5 volts, these diodes are going to keep current from flowing back up into this upper part of the circuit here. The, the current can't flow backwards through the diode. So basically when the intensity bit is high we can just ignore this whole part of the circuit and all of these resistors that we just added right here. Right? Pretend that none of that's there. We've still got our 470 ohm uh, resistors on the uh, on the outside here and this uh, 75 ohm termination resistor inside of the monitor giving us our uh, 7 tenths of a volt maximum RGB uh, analog RGB intensity uh, on the screen when the intensity bit is high. But now when the intensity bit goes low it's going to allow current to flow down through these diodes because when intensity goes low this is going to act like another ground here, right? So we've got this termination resistor inside the monitor tied to ground. And there's one of these on each of the uh, each of the lines inside the monitor, by the way, right? So, um, but yeah, when uh, when the intensity bit goes low, this acts just like ground over here and will allow current to flow down through each of these diodes, since they will pass current in that direction, and the uh, this resistor in here will help us continue to pull down the voltage in much the same way that these internal termination resistors do, uh, but it will pull down the voltage further um, so that we can lower that lower than seven tenths of a volt. We want to get 
uh, 0.35 volts approximately out of that. So how um, how are we going to figure out uh, the value of this resistor here um, to make shit work right? Well, um, we can uh, as long as the intensity bit is low, we can kind of conceptually simplify this circuit into something that looks like this. We'll have our VN the same as we had before in our other uh, voltage divider circuit up here, right? Um, and it'll come through our 470 ohm R1 just like it did and give us a output voltage, V out voltage, and we'll have another line coming down here, but this time we've got two resistors in circuit. All right, we have both this 75 ohm termination resistor that's inside the monitor side, but on this side we have this other resistor that we've just added, whose value we don't know. All right, and those are both tied to ground. We can kind of ignore that that diode's there. There will actually be a voltage drop across this diode, um, which will affect what value we need to choose for these resistors, but um, I will probably use variable resistors here in the final circuit anyway uh, so that we can adjust the uh, dim um, color intensity for each channel as well. Uh, so we don't need to worry so much about that. Um, and these are all of course tied to ground like this and uh, we'll call this, we're going to call this, this was originally, we were originally calling this R2 right here, we're going to call this R2A this time, and we're going to call this one over here that we don't know, we're going to call, call it R2B. Alright, and uh, we know that we want our VN to be, is always going to be 5 volts, and we want our V out to be 0.35 volts in this case, where the intensity bit is low. Alright, so, I'm write an equation that expresses the uh, total resistance of this part of the circuit right here from this point to this point. If we measure the resistance from these two points, we can think of these two resistors as one resistor, right? And uh, the equation to calculate um, the total, uh, total resistance of a parallel resistance circuit, it's a little more complicated than doing them in series. When they're in series, as we saw before, um, we just uh, add them together. But when, uh, when we have resistors wired in parallel like this, the, uh, the um, equation for uh, Solving for that ends up being uh, 1 over the total resistance is equal to 1 over the value of R1 plus 1 over the value of R2 plus any number of other resistors, 1 over Rn, the total number, the last uh, resistor in our parallel resistor network here. So this is obviously um, exceptionally tedious to solve. In fact, it makes me want to open a delicious adult beverage, even thinking about that. But, um, in most cases, we're only going to have uh, two resistors in parallel anyway, and um, even if we've got more than that, we can solve them in little uh, little groups of two and then solve those. And you know what I'm saying. So we can, uh, to simplify things, we can ignore this side of the equation and just assume that we've just got two resistors there, right? And so um, now we can a little a little more easily uh, solve for the total resistance here. If we uh, solve for RT, I think I just did this yesterday or whenever the previous video was and I already... I th yeah, it's, it's R1 over R2 over R1 plus R2, all right? It gives us the... Uh, is that right? Yes. Um, that gives us the uh, total resistance of a pair of resistors wired in parallel. So, um, now that we've got this, right, we can go back to our happy little voltage divider equation. Except wherever we see R2 in this equation, we can substitute in this crap. So um, in this case, uh, the value of R2, as we see in this, uh, this diagram right here, is going to be equal to R2A times R2B over R2A plus R2B, 
right? So we'll, we'll change our variable name so that it matches our schematic here. That makes things a little less likely to get confuzzlecated, because I am nothing if not dumb. Okay, so uh, we can set our equation back up the same way that we did here, except uh, in this case we're going to end up solving for R2B. So, it's going to look something like this. We're going to have our uh, V out of 0.35 volts. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and divide that 5 volts out of the out of the both sides there. And then we um, for R2, we can substitute in this equation. So, it's going to equal R2A or R, R2B. And we know what R2A is, is 75 ohms times 75 ohms, right? And that's going to be over R2B plus 75, right? And then that, don't forget we're not done yet, is all going to be over the value of R1, which is 460 ohms, plus the value of R2 once again, which we can copy from up here, assuming I did it right, so maybe I better... Uh, Maybe I better double check that. It's, it's R2A times R2B is going to be 75 R2B. Alright, over R2B plus 75. Yeah, R2B plus 75. So that, uh, that looks pretty gnarly, but um, we can solve for R2B here. And uh, I will also save you that pain. Hang on a second. Alright, so through the magic of video editing, once again, we have uh, scratched up my fuck up and um, solved uh, R2B here and equal to 64.3 uh, ohms. Now, um, that's pretty, a pretty uncommon uh, resistor value. If we look back at our uh, equation that we came up with here, as R2 here uh, becomes larger, um, R1 has uh, less of an effect on the output voltage, uh, so that'll raise the output voltage a little bit as um, as R2 becomes larger. So um, I think that this output voltage that we are going to end up wanting here is probably going to be a little bit higher than um, 0.35 volts anyway. Probably going to end up using a variable resistor for that anyway. Um, but the closest thing that I've got that's higher than 64 ohms is 100 ohms. So uh, that's still that's higher than 75 ohms on the other side, whereas 64 was lower. So that's liable to give us a little bit of fuck up there. Um, I'm going to just call this 64 ohms for now. We'll probably use a variable resistor there. This is still going to be on the outside, uh, the outside of the uh, contraption here, and we'll probably use variable resistors for all these two. So uh, we can do a little bit of fine tuning and tweakeroo with that. I think that um, there is some way uh, to uh, externally terminate our circuit with uh, to 75 ohms, and then we can uh, we can have a little bit more play with our resistor values here. So um, that may be how we end up doing the final circuit. Although if we're going to be using variable resistors in here anyway uh, for fine fine adjustment. Um, that may not be may not be necessary. Keep things simple, I guess. So um, that will give us our uh, 16 different colors, two different intensities of each of red, green, and blue on our analog RGB side there. But we still have to worry about the sync signal. Well, that, that's a good bit easier. Um, we have to generate a composite sync signal from these uh, two separate horizontal and vertical sync signals. Now. Um, According to my reading, which I may have misunderstood, I may be full of shit because I am uh, I'm not an electrical engineer and um, not even a very good amateur. Um, my understanding is that the way that you're supposed to generate composite sync is through an OR gate, um, which is uh, which is very uh, convenient because if we were to use an OR gate here, uh, we could do that um, without any uh, um, integrated circuits by doing a wire OR here. That uh, that does um, fuck with our waveform a little bit, but it would be 
simpler than using um, an actual OR gate here, but um, I don't know if that would even work. We might even still have to use an, an, an honest to God OR gate there. But um, this this card uh, card this this uh, contraption that we're going to use to scan double this thing to get it up to VGA frequencies um, it apparently has a bug uh, that causes it to use non-standard composite sync. Um, or maybe com this actually is composite sync, and when you OR them together, it's something different called HV sync. I'm not sure. I've read both things on the internet, and um, that creates quite a paradox because everything on the internet is true, so I don't know what to believe. But in any case, um, in order to get proper composite sync on this board right here, you have to actually use an ex or exclusive OR gate here. So that's all there is to that, just an exclusive OR gate that gives us our c-sync signal over here. Nothing to it. This is still a TTL signal uh, even though this is an analog RGB connection just the RGB signals are analog. The, uh, the, sync, the sync signals are still digital. So um, that in theory would give us beautiful CGA to eventual VGA conversion but it doesn't this isn't actually going to work in practice. Um, in practice, there are two colors that aren't going to be um, done correctly by this circuit. One of them being brown, which will show up as a dark yellow. And in order to get it to show up um, as a dark, uh, as an actual brown instead of a dark yellow, we have to actually drop uh, this red voltage just a little bit. Only when that um, brown color, which is red and green and low intensity, um, and no blue are uh, are activated. So um, that'll require uh, some, some, some external logic and another resistor to do that. And additionally, um, the way that we've set up these diodes down here to keep, uh, keep our in, uh, signals from mixing through this intensity line in a way that we don't want, um, there's, there's a dark gray signal that's supposed to be displayed when red, green, and blue are all zero, but intensity by itself is high. Um, but the way we've got our circuit set up, that's still going to output nothing. It's going to output black on the analog side. So we're going to have to figure out um, how to deal with that too. And uh, the most common way that I've seen that done in other people's schematics that I've looked at on the internet is to use a 74LS138 uh, 3D decoder which is actually a very good idea. It's an active, it has active low output, so you can use it to, you know, add a couple little pull-down resistors here and there to, you know, tweak certain signals when, uh, when certain combinations of red, green, blue, and intensity are um, selected. And uh, that's a great idea, and it would work great. Um, and, in fact, we may try to implement that uh, next time. Um, but uh, I think that a better way to do this, all right, especially, especially if we also eventually want to support uh, MDA graphics with this, which is basically CGA with only one color channel, color channel, um, and an intensity channel, it just makes it a two-bit version of this, um, <coughs> of the same circuit uh, to display MDA graphics um, on a VG. Er, eventually through this thing on a VGA monitor. There are some differences though. The horizontal refresh rate is 50 Hz for MDA uh, instead of 60 Hz, but I don't think that hurts anything. Uh, the, um, the vertical refresh, I mean, is uh, 50 Hz instead of 60 Hz. The, um, the horizontal sync frequency is uh, like 18 kilohertz or something like that, so it ends up being uh, a higher resolution on a VGA monitor than 640 by 480. Uh, but uh, I think I think it still works, and there's uh, there's some polarity differences down here in the uh, synchronization signals on MDA. But otherwise, the the circuit will be the, would be the, the same as this, just without two of these color channels. However, for EGA, um, EGA doesn't have an intensity signal, and eventually we want to try to convert that too. Even though I don't have any EGA cards, um, who knows what can happen in the future? But um, EGA doesn't have any intensity signal, but it does have two bits each for red, green, and blue, um, which is actually a little easier to deal with. We can just use like an R2R uh, uh, digital, anal digital to analog converter resistor bridge to uh, generate our voltages uh, for EGA. 
Um, and it ends up being a lot cleaner than this. So that made me think to myself, well, why can't we just take a fucking uh, programmable logic device, like a GAL or something, and input, like, RGB intensity, horizontal and vertical, just basically every pin on the DB9 connector, because then we can use another input, a couple of inputs to select between MDA, CGA, and EGA, and then all of those, we can write a bunch of equations uh, for the PAL, that depending on, you know, what uh, dip switch we've got selected, you know, to select the kind of video that we're plugging into, we won't have to rewire connectors or anything like that. It'll just be a DB9 connector that any of uh, MDA, EGA, or CGA will plug into. Um, then on the output side of the gal, we can just output those two bits each, the same as EGA has of red, green, and blue, run those through that simple R2R uh, digital to analog converter, um, get the uh, termination shit um, solved rate right with um, probably a couple other resistors and then feed that into the uh, scan doubler and uh, we'll have to have uh, we'll have to feed the sync signals into it too because uh, the different uh, CGA can actually have both um, positive and negative synchronization signals I'm not sure between which video mode is selected so that's that'll that'll be kind of funny to do with PAL equations um, I'm not sure what to think about that. But other than that, um, the PAL will be able to generate the proper C-Sync no matter what the polarity of the uh, horizontal and vertical um, TTL sync signals is too. So it'll just be like one chip and um, like six or eight resistors, I think. Which is about as simple as we can get because this is going to be one chip just for the exclusive OR gate and six resistors and three diodes. So, yeah, just programming like a $2 gal might end up being far better and more flexible. I don't know. I'm going to try to implement this circuit first as uh, my parts get here. And um, I think Friday is when my uh, high-density DB15 connectors are supposed to arrive, so we can start playing with breadboard then. But in the meantime... Um, I hope that I haven't actually done nearly as much dumb shit in this video as I did in the last one, so, and I hope that I haven't bored you to tears all over again. Um, I'm definitely not as drunk this time, so that probably helps. So anyway, thanks for joining me, my friends, and uh, I'll uh, see you next time. I hope that this was less uh, uninformative than the last video was. Have a lovely week.